The gospel taken from St. Luke, chapter 14, verses 1 through 11. At that time, when Jesus went into the house of one of the chiefs of the Pharisees, set on the Sabbath day to eat bread, they watched him. And behold, there was a certain man before him that had the dropsy. And Jesus answering, spoke to the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? But they held their peace. But he, taking him, healed him and sent him away. And answering them, he said, Which of you shall have a donkey or an ox fall into a pit that will not immediately draw him out on the Sabbath day? And they could not answer him to these things. And he spoke a parable also to them that were invited, marking how they chose the first seats at the table, saying to them, When thou art invited to a wedding, sit not down in the first place, lest perhaps one more honorable than thou be invited by him. And he that invited thee and him come and say to thee, Give this man place. And then thou begin with shame to take the lowest place. But when thou art invited, go sit down in the lowest place. That when he who invited thee cometh, he may say to thee, Friend, go up higher. Then shalt thou have glory before them that sit at table with thee, because every one that exalteth himself shall be humbled, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Those are the words of today's holy gospel. That Christ may dwell by faith in your hearts, that being rooted and founded in charity, you may be able to comprehend with all of the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth, to know also the charity of Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. <clears throat> in today's epistle, St. Paul speaks to us about measurements. Measuring the love of Christ. He's speaking about how much love there is in the heart of Christ. And about acquiring that own love in our very own hearts. He speaks of understanding the love of Christ with our minds. And of experiencing the love of Christ in our hearts. To understand the breadth the length and the height and the depth of Christ's love, and to know by experience the charity of Christ that surpasses all knowledge. But how do we do this? How can we know and how can we experience the love of Christ in our lives? How do we have an adequate measuring stick to measure the depth of the love of Christ? However great or sublime may be a human love, to which we can compare the love of Christ, that human love is inadequate. Whatever comparison we use to measure the length and breadth and height and depth of Christ, we still are not able to measure the love of Christ. It is the most pure, and the most disinterested, sublime, heroic love that we can imagine still falls short of the charity of Christ. And yet St. Paul says, he speaks to us to indicate that we can understand and that we can experience the love of Christ. The question is, how can we measure? What is the means by which we may do this? How can we begin to understand? How can we begin to experience the love of Christ in our very own hearts? And the answer is very, very simple. All we have to do is to consider always and devoutly the passion and death of Christ. To consider in our heart every day our suffering Savior, and we will come to understand his heart. If we look at his nail-pierced hands, we consider his thorn-crowned head. We keep before our eyes the Savior tied to a pillar, scourged for the world's sins of impurity. His wounds and blood will reveal his heart pierced and open as it were, to release the pressure, the fire that burns within that heart. This is the reason why the crucifix, the crucifix is so important in a Catholic's life. And that is why the crucifix is despised by Satan. Satan hates the image of the crucified Savior. In fact, the hatred for the crucifix is the chief characteristic of the diabolic. And so the modernists, his the diabolic servants, have removed the crucifix from their classrooms. They have moved it from Catholic hospitals. They've even removed it from their churches. And in this place of the crucifix, they put an empty cross or probably the image of the risen, glorified Christ. These the devil will tolerate, but not the crucified Christ. St. Paul says, 
I judge not myself to know anything among you but Jesus Christ crucified. The devil will not tolerate the sight of a God made man, hanging upon a cross, covered with wounds and blood, his side open, his heart pierced for love of us. It enrages Satan and it infuriates him because it reminds him of his loss and drives him into a rage and envy because we can attain what he cannot. We can achieve what he has lost. The devil also knows the power of the crucifix to inspire great love in the hearts of men for Christ. Our Lord said in the book of St. Luke, I have come to cast fire upon the earth, and what, what I but I, I am constrained that it will be accomplished. The baptism that our Lord is speaking of was the baptism of his blood upon the cross. He considers his death as a means to inspire heroic loves in the heart of men. This is seen by the word that our Lord said when he was straightened. In other words, our Lord said he feels constrained, he can feel restricted until he should die the cruel death of the cross and thereby show his love to us and inspire us to love him in return. St. Paul tells us about keeping the cross of Christ in our minds, that the sight of him may give us strength to fight against sin and to fight in this world for our salvation. Seeing him suffer for us, we may be not wearied or overcome by what we have to endure in our life for him. That's why St. Paul says in the book of Hebrews, Laying aside every weight and sin which surrounds us, let us run by patience to the fight that is proposed to us. And he continues on, he says, while we go to that fight, he says, looking upon Jesus who endured the cross, despising the shame. Think diligently upon him, he says. That endure he that endured such opposition from sinners against himself, that you may not be wearied or fainting in your minds. For you, he says, St. Paul, have not resisted yet unto blood against sin, as did our Lord. St. Augustine, thinking of the crucified Savior, said, Imprint, O Lord, thy wounds in my heart. And that I may read therein thy suffering and thy love. Thy suffering that I may endure all for thee and all suffering for thee. And thy love, says St. Augustine, that I may despise everything except thy love. My dear faithful, one of the surest signs of our love for our suffering Savior is obedience. Obedience to his commandments. For that's what our Lord said at the Last Supper. He says, if you love me, you keep my commandments. My dear faithful, there is a heaven and there is a hell. And both last for eternity. Our Lord died to save us from hell and for heaven. If we die in the state of sanctifying grace, we attain heaven. If we die in mortal sin, we're cast into the pit of hell for all eternity. The world is passing away, and we are on our way to our judgment. So consider these words seriously. Reflect upon your Savior nailed to a cross for love. For love of you, for your sakes, and for his sake, love him. Obey his commandments. Jesus Christ crucified should be, as it were, a book that we carry in our hearts and that we read every day. We should constantly read this book because it teaches us to hate sin, and it inflames in us a fire of love to love him in return. The passion and death of Christ, the measuring stick which enables us to comprehend and experience the love of Christ in our hearts. So truly we can say, as we contemplate the passion and death of Christ, now I do see 
I see the breadth. I see the length. I see the height. And I see the depth of the love of Christ for me. May God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.